Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, we're fresh off of our trip to Matt's. Uh, we went down to Las Vegas for that big event down there and my God, did we have so much fun. I had a blast. The kids had fun. I got to take all my friends for rides. The car drove spectacular. We had a couple little issues, of course, that we worked through, but nothing super crazy and we beat the hell out of it. The engine ran phenomenal, a ton of power. Uh, we roasted the tires off the entire time we were autocrossing. Unfortunately, didn't get to drag race, but I tell you what, there were a few issues that we had on the drag or on the autocross course that uh, would have definitely showed their face on the drag race strip. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be making some upgrades to that car in the future and uh, look forward to taking that car up to uh, Firebird here in Idaho Falls a few times this year and hopefully make some good passes. And uh, we're just gonna keep on making that car better and better. It's so much fun, it's an awesome car. And uh, a lot of you guys also, um, you know, really enjoyed it up at Matt's. So, but you know, going to these events, it definitely kind of gives me that drive, that inspiration, um, you know, the motivation to come back and immediately start working on something else and getting it ready for the next event. And I feel like that's where the channel's kind of heading. Last year, we got our 71 CUDA all ready for uh, the Evanston Car Show in Wyoming. And then we jumped straight on the Ratty Saddy. Um, and don't worry, the car behind me, we're gonna be doing some work on it today. It's for a good buddy of mine, Jeremy, over at Shade Tree Vintage Auto. Um, it's a 1970 Dodge Super B, really cool car. I'll show you guys in just a second. Um, but before you all jump down my throat and run down to the comments and say, where's the charger? Where's the charger? Well, the charger is back. It's back in the shop. It's going to be, uh, blasted here in the next few days here at the house. We're going to be throwing it straight into epoxy bodywork, right into paintwork. And my goal is to have that car running, driving, racing, for duct tape drags down in Tucson in that September, October timeframe. So, so much work to do, but the good news is all the metal work's already done on the car. And uh, yeah, we put a lot of time, a lot of money into this thing already. And uh, you know, frankly, I owe it to you guys to see it through. And uh, you know, I owe the growth of my channel, frankly, to this car. And I can't wait to have it done. The kids have been on me, you guys have been on me, and uh, it's long overdue. So. I hear you loud and clear, and we are gonna get back on this thing and get it done. But let me show you guys what we're gonna jump into today. Now, what you guys are looking at here, of course, one of the most famous muscle cars of all time, 1970 Dodge Super B. This thing is killer. It's absolutely killer. Um, it belongs to my good buddy, Jeremy, over at Shade Tree Vintage Auto. Now, I will say, if you guys have not subscribed to his channel yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. He always comes across really cool cars cool barn finds, collections, he's got parts, he's got everything that you guys need, and uh, he's helped me a ton. The Ratty Saddy came from Jeremy, a lot of the parts came um, from him as well, parts for the Charger that we're going to be putting on this car have come from him, uh, things that are on the Cuda have also come from him, and uh, yeah, great guy, a lot of good resources. Um, if he doesn't have the parts, I bet you that he knows where to find what you're looking for. But uh, this is an ENCODE car. It's actually an original four-speed car too, which is super, super rad. But uh, it needs some trunk pan work today. So just like we did on the Ratty Saddy, we're gonna be sectioning in a huge portion of the trunk pan. Now, unfortunately, like a lot of Mopars did back in the day, you know, you can see here, we've got this big, beautiful back window here, the B-body back window. Same exact back window that is on the Ratty Saddy, mind you. And you guys can kind of see some of the rust that's underneath of that trim there. It's the exact same rust areas on that car. And guess what? We have the exact same rust issues <laughs> that we did on my car as well. So, you know, all that water, all the condensation, everything else collects up underneath of this trim, rots it to shit, water drains down there, fills up this trunk pan, and it just completely eats itself, okay? So somebody's obviously cut this out here and kind of squared everything off. Um, we've also got a beautiful brand new gas tank in here that looks fantastic. We'll obviously get that out of the way for two reasons. Number one, it's too pretty. And number two, <laughs> we need to make sure there's not racing gas in there because I'm pretty sure it's still full um, because this car was also down at Matt's. Now, Jeremy is a big fan of burnouts like most of us are. So this thing has got a whole lot of dirt, dust, and debris and everything else kind of thrown up in here. So, ooh, you can see another big hole back there. So, yeah, quite a big job here, but we're going to definitely do a good job for him. And, you know, we'll clean this whole thing up and uh, find out where the good metal stops, the bad metal starts, and cut it out and uh, make it like new. 
And at this point, guys, there ain't a whole lot more to it than to do it. So let's go ahead, let's get this deck lid taken off, get that tank out of there, and uh, let's knock out this trunk pan. Alrighty, so jumping ahead just a little bit, I got the trunk pan all trimmed up, got it fit to the car, and it's a really, really good fit. Okay, now looking here on the trunk pan, you guys can see right off the bat on the new pan, I went ahead and cut off the top section of that. All the metal up on top of the rear axle is actually in really, really good shape. So went ahead, saved that, and cut underneath of a little ridge here that's on um, this uh, red portion of the existing pan. So we should be able to blend that just fine. Now. The metal that where I kind of stopped at around the edges of the pan is actually in really, really good shape. So did a full damage assessment, kind of went around it, figured out where I wanted to make those seams at. And, uh, you know, without disturbing too much of the original metal here, because when you go drilling this out and air chiseling it and prying it and all that stuff, um, there's a good chance that we can open up a can of worms and be doing a whole lot more work than what, uh, what we really need to. So we're gonna end up cutting just short of our seams here so that way we can weld those up nice and tight. We can blend those, body work those. And like always, my goal with this is to make it look like it was never done. Part of that, the factory never lap welded down the middle <laughs> of this two piece trunk pan. So I went ahead, I threw in some Clecos already. Um, we can go ahead and pop this back out of the car. We can match those holes up. We can go ahead and cut that seam and then we can do really, really nice butt weld on that once we get it back into the car. And that'll be our seam that we can then metal finish and blend um, beautifully. Now, the only real uh, work that I had to do here is, you know, this car had suffered a hit here on the driver's side, call it a whiskey dent. Um, I don't know if there was a fender bend or what have you, but the side of this car at some point was caved in and it actually pushed in the uh, trunk drop on this side and it kind of folded the whole thing up. And so use a little bit of Porta Power Persuasion, also use my dolly as well as my sledgehammer. And uh, we got that flattened back out again. It's nice and passable. Um, you know, if and when the time ever comes where Jeremy does decide to recorder this car, um, you know, I think that that would be the time to go ahead and do both trunk drops while that's all open. Because his intention is to kind of save this patina, this ratty look, which I'll be honest with you, it looks awesome. The original stripes absolutely look killer on this thing. And uh, yeah, because when you go in and you start drilling out your original trunk drops, you're gonna get into the quarter panels, you're gonna get into the wheelhouse and you're gonna have very obvious marks and also some paint blending, um, you know, where there was some work done. So from here guys, what we're gonna do is that we're actually going to be tracing the perimeter of this trunk pan with a couple different tools here. We can either use our grinding wheel or we can also use our handy little roto zip here. I found that whenever I can trace things with this, I'm cutting, you know, kind of the underside piece of metal so that way we have really, really tight butt welds. Um, this leaves uh, a very, very small gap to weld up. You don't have to bridge anything crazy with your weld or add any uh, filler metal or anything like that. And uh, should be a really nice, clean finish. So let's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get some lighting inside of this trunk. And I will do my best to try to film this, guys. It's really hard with my big ass in this trunk. You really can't see a whole lot around me while I'm in here. So I'll try to do my best and show you guys kind of what we're doing and also any tips or tricks for doing this job. So let's go ahead, let's get this thing lit up and let's get this pan all cut out.
Alrighty you guys, well we got all the work done on the trunk pan, we got it painted, it turned out really, really good. I think Jeremy's gonna be super happy with it. Now, I did have some extra time, I did not film any of it, but I will show you here in just a second. There's a few things that are gonna be of a bit surprise to him, some extra work that I did that really needed to be done because he's gonna be driving this thing everywhere, he's gonna be taking it to shows, he's gonna be autocrossing it, drag racing it, everything else, and wanna make sure it's safe, and also wanna make sure that, you know, the rust issues, the water, et cetera, um, you know, is not gonna further exacerbate and get any worse here over time but let's take a look at this trunk pan real quick now when you open this up the first thing you notice the beautiful brand new seal around there the second thing you notice this badass rust bucket resto sticker there and the third thing you notice is how freaking awesome the trunk pan in this car looks now this car is not going to be a you know pristine uh, you know, concourse show winner or anything like that. It's ratty, okay? It's been sitting outside for a long time. I personally love that. That's why we have the ratty saddy. But he really, really likes that, and I think it builds and adds to the character of this car. Just the killer patina that's all over this thing. And he really wanted that to show as well in the trunk pan and wanted it to look like it's been in the car for 50 years. And I think we achieved that. And uh, you guys saw the painting process there. It's really not very complicated. Um, you really can't screw it up. You just keep on adding more pain if you don't like it but i think it turned out absolutely killer also straightened out the trunk drop on this side we do have some lower quarters yet to do on this side um, so i couldn't really get anything within a decent amount of time or for a really a decent price either and we're not going to put full quarters on this car so it will be coming back at some point for these lower quarter panels right there now he's going to be here in like 15 minutes he's going to be really surprised and uh, let me show you some of the extra work that we got done here. Now, when he showed up, I didn't realize it until he had me actually back it into the stall, but he didn't have a gas pedal in this car. The pedal was gone, it's just the bar that goes there, and I noticed that his heel was actually going through the floorboard in the car, so we had to fix that for him, okay? And so I ended up using a uh, half of an AMD pan here, but basically everything from here all the way up and underneath the pedals has, that's probably Jeremy texting me right now telling me he's almost here, so I'm gonna make this quick. <laughs> but uh, I went ahead, replaced all of that here, guys. Butt welded everything, there's no laps, anything like that. And again, I could fool any one of you guys into thinking that that is the original floor pan in this car. So now that we've got this open, I gotta hurry up and throw that plug in there before uh, before he gets here. But I also knocked out a little hole that was on the passenger side as well. So he can add carpet in here. He can you know make this more comfortable to drive, and uh, he can add a damn gas pedal, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, I know he's blowing me up right now. So he's almost here. Let's see his reaction. All right, you've had to wait a week. It's been <laughs> We hammered it up pretty I quick. Know. And it was the only time that it was nice weather up there. I didn't get to drive it. it yeah, yeah. Oh, I see the... So here's your brand new 50-year-old car. I see that he... Look good? Uh, fixed the hood. Awesome. Yeah, you said that those uh, hood pins are driving you nuts. Yeah, so. like OCD, total wrong place. Yeah. Really upset me. Yep. <laughs> so went ahead and shaved these on each side here. So now you can paint these to match. Man, my crazy ass neighbors over there are going nuts. Okay, uh, but you can paint these to match and then drill your holes wherever the pins are at. Heck yeah. So. You got it dirty though. It's a little dusty, a little dustier than what you brought it here. Right. When you brought it here, yep. Oh. Well, you're jumping to the surprise already. Well, so went ahead yeah. and did the floor patches. Dude. <laughs> that means I can actually you know, not worry about my foot falling through a hole when I'm pushing right. the <laughs> Right. Awesome. Or your passenger's feet from getting wet, anything like that. So. Mm, and I just ordered a new carpet. I'm glad that you did this. Cause... Looks pretty sweet. So there was a big ass hole right there on the passenger side. The driver's side, like you guys saw, was much, much larger. So, man, you're ruining the surprise. You're jumping into it already. I'm sorry. Well, I guess let's go ahead and look at the driver's side. Jeez. <laughs> Dude, you gotta realize, I've been all over this car, so I see something different, I'm gonna notice. <laughs> so, check out that driver's floor. Oh, yeah. Now, noticed in Vegas, and of course, when you're backing into the stall here, that your foot went pretty much completely through the floorboard. You don't have a gas pedal installed, yeah, so hopefully now, you keep your feet dry, put some carpet in this thing, and uh, be a little bit more safe.
but yeah. yeah literally finished that this morning i think the paint may still be wet in some areas so yeah. just don't drag your feet across the ground a whole bunch <laughs> I mean, I might, I, we might need to go do a burnout. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, good call, good call. So, so I had to also... Well, yeah. Add a little bit. <laughs> okay, and the whole reason you came here originally was for the trunk pan, so... Wow. <laughs> Looks a lot different. I mean, I thought that I did a good job using my OEM sheet metal in my 25 minute job, but uh, damn. <laughs> I don't even want to put that piece of sheet metal back in here, so you may have to donate that to my wall if that's okay. <laughs> okay. I can do that. So I really tried to go for like hiding everything so you could never tell that it was even cut out or anything like that, so it's all been body work. And then of course kind of did the the faux patina make it look rough kind of paint so after you throw some dirt in here and throw some parts and oil and everything else Dude. should hopefully blend in with the rest of the car i don't even want to put a trunk mat in there i know <laughs> <laughs> it looks killer so this wow. drop also because i know we didn't want to dig into the quarter panels quite yet but that uh, quarter panel drop was also like really bent up yeah. and so use the porta power on that and end up flattening that out pretty good so it's not perfect, but it's passable. Dude, it's so, a beater. It's a beater, <laughs> yep. Yep. Awesome, I love it. Man. So also threw a new trunk seal on here as well. So, cause your back window is actually really solid, but I think a lot of it was coming in through the seal across yeah. the top. And then uh, of course the gaping hole that was in the trunk also. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> so This was literally one of those at what trunk floor? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So whoever did a good job, uh, you know, helping me remove some of that <laughs> sure made my life a whole lot easier, but looks killer. You happy? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> I, awesome. I almost don't want to take it home and tear it back apart. I want to go drive it. <laughs> well, here you go. Beautiful. Yep. It's bad. Is it? are a little sketchy yeah this, this trailer i bought this brand new in 2001 <laughs> and i can't tell you how many cars have been on it but i guarantee you it's in the four digits <laughs> no no kidding oh yeah holy cow dude, this car, this trailer's been all over the country damn even your plate's hammered dude <laughs> oh yeah that's the original plate and uh yeah i was only 18 when i bought it i think it was 1800 dollars out the door <laughs> and i could probably still sell it for that yeah i wouldn't Probably the best investment I've ever made. Right. Got her all strapped down, man. Thank you for trusting me with your car, dude. Thanks. Appreciate you. So. Oh. Well, go give her hell. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go back up to where it's freezing. Yeah. I don't want to be up there. It's cold. <laughs> all right. We'll travel safe. Yeah. All right, well, it always sucks to see them go, even though they're not mine. I had a hard time letting go of that convertible Roadrunner as well as the B. But uh, yeah, on to more important things. It's finally time to start working. We've got a little bit of work to do on the Ratty Saddy, which you guys will see in the next video. 
And then yes, the charger is coming back. We have a blast appointment here in about a week, week and a half or so. So hopefully the weather is a little bit better because as soon as that thing gets blasted, it's gonna be absolute hammer time. Getting this thing going, we gotta get it all prepped out. We're gonna get it sprayed in epoxy and uh, move straight on to paint and body because the metal work is all done. So if you haven't done so yet, guys, definitely hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching. And uh, yeah, can't wait to show you more of my builds. So take care. I'll see you again real soon.